All right, this morning we're going to talk about how to back up a table. And you may have heard of how to back up a database. We've already covered that. Um, backing up a table. One quick second. I'm just going to find a table in this database. I think it's going to be this one. We're going to back it up. It's actually a very fast thing to do. Yeah, this is the one with, I believe, 100,000 rows. We're going to do time gaps underscore. Now, everybody has their own way of backing up a table. I do the date that I backed it up, so it's 0214. All right, so I'm going to select star. You'll see from the table, but I'm doing into. Now, this table does not exist, and I'll prove that to you really fast. Select star from sys tables, and you will see that there is no table called time gaps underscore anything. So I'm. this is going to create the table on the fly. And you'll see it inserted. And so then I can select star. Oh, OK, let's just go to this again just to show you. The table is created out of thin air. Not just the Federal Reserve that can create money out of thin air. They can do that too right there. So, And then we can select star from this table, and it has all the data. And that's how you back up a table. Some really quick pointers. First of all, backing up a table is dependent on your environment. Uh, if they do not do it this way, ask them how they do this. About a year and a half ago, I had never heard of backing up a table. I had backed up databases. I've been in the industry for many years, but I had never backed up a table. And it's because it depends on the company. Most companies, companies that I had worked at, we would back up a database before rolling out changes to production. We'd back up the entire database, then roll out changes. The reason why some companies do this, like the company that I work at right now, um, they have 300 servers. On each server, they have an average of 25 databases. It's just not going to be convenient. And then, of course, on each of those databases, I should say there's hundreds of changes happening on, uh, every second. It's not convenient to back up an entire database and roll it back out. That's, that's really going to be inconvenient. So it's just faster to back up a table. And the only tables that we really change, and this is a key here, we're only really changing reference tables. We're not changing any table that the client's hitting. Those tables, for the most part, stay the same. It's the reference tables. And so reference tables, clients don't typically access. This is a, a case in point of a table that we would generally you know, not make updates to because it's containing the price of Bitcoin as it goes on. Um, and then the other thing as well, whatever way you go about backing up your table, for instance, if you do something like this, notice how I have an underscore here. I also have an automated process that will eventually drop all of the tables with an underscore date. And that's important because um, there's a server right now, or I'm sorry, a database right now that I uh, access from time to time. It's not one of my own, it's the company's, but they literally have 2,000 backup tables. They don't need them, they've just piled up. So make sure you have some type of automated process that's going to go through and get rid of all of these backup tables once you no longer need them. The bottom line is that the changes you've made to production after a week don't affect things negatively more than likely you can go ahead and get rid of those things, those uh, backup tables.